Hello everybody, I'm Nora and today is the perfect crafting day. We had a big snowstorm last night and so everything is nice and white and chilly outside. So I wanna be inside and I wanna make something. So today we are going to make some bunting and I'm going to be making mine in the Valentine's Day theme cause Valentine's Day is right around the corner. So think lots of hearts and lace and pinks and reds, so that's what I'm gonna do. But you can really make your bunting any way you want. You could make bunting for the kitchen, you could do Christmas bunting, you could do birthday bunting. I really wanted to make some fun birthday bunting with polka dots and stripes and bright colors, so that could be really fun, you could do that. For, for those of you who don't know bunting, it's like a banner. Think uh, circus, right, with all the triangles, the rainbow triangles around the circus tent, that's kind of the bunting feel. We're gonna cut out a little template, which will be super fast. And I wanna add some details to my bunting. So I don't want it just to be fabric. I wanna add some lace and pretty detailed kind of things. So we'll, we'll do that as well. So let's get started and make something pretty. Some of this fabric are little scraps that I have, just left over from other projects, and then other fabric is some, some larger pieces of yardage. But I didn't have to buy anything, so this is all out of my stash, and you all know that I love to use up the fabric that I have. So, first step, I'm gonna make my template here. It's gonna be easy breezy. Now, don't forget to take into account your seam allowance, and I will probably have about a fourth inch seam allowance. You can make your bunting pieces any size or shape that you want. So you could even do teeny tiny bunting pieces that are the size of you know, this triangle here. You could do just teeny tiny ones, especially if you're gonna do like bunting, or I guess in this case it'd be called garland for the Christmas tree. You could just make a really long chain of little triangles that would be really cute. I'm gonna make a little mark at the top here on one side and a little mark on the other side. And then I'm gonna connect these two with my ruler. And then I'm gonna cut straight across. Make sure you use your craft scissors and not your fabric scissors. That is not just an old wives tale about how cutting paper will ruin your fabric scissors, it really does. I'm gonna think about how big I want my triangle to be. I'm gonna maybe come all the way to this point here. I want to find the middle of this line. This is my middle spot here. I've turned, my, I've turned it so that this straight line is against this yellow straight line. And I'm gonna follow my midpoint. I made my midpoint dot right here. I'm gonna follow that midpoint dot and align my ruler up against the yellow line. So I have my ruler against this yellow line and my cardboard against this yellow line and I'm going to make another line. I'm just using a, the, the box that some crackers came in and so you don't need anything fancy, just any cardboard will do. You should have three dots at the top. One, two, three. The one in the middle, make sure it's right exactly in the middle I have a straight line going all the way down. These are both 90 degree angles here. I'm going to take my ruler and go from this dot up in this corner, the first dot, all the way down to the dot at the bottom. And same on the other side. Now I'm going to cut my triangle out. And this will be my template. So I'm gonna take my first piece here. So here I am just going to line my ruler up with my template. I'm not thinking at all about the yellow lines on my cutting mat. Those don't matter. I'm just going to be following my template now and I'm going to cut. And then I will turn the template and the fabric. The other way that you could do this is you could trace the triangle on the back of the fabric like this. and then cut it out by hand. And I'm gonna do that for this one. I might change it up here and there. I may do some with the rotary cutter. And there's the first one. So this is gonna be the front, and then I will cut another triangle for the back, but I'm gonna wait 
to do the back. I'm gonna cut all my fronts first and then kind of see what I wanna do next. And I do have this nice piece of scrap left over for another project, and you know how much I love those scraps. So let's do another triangle. Let's do one of these pieces. Trace it with my pencil. I think I like this way better than the rotary cutter for this project. Sometimes you need the rotary cutter and sometimes you don't. And then cut this one out. It's always better to iron your fabric before before you use it. I did not iron this fabric and I probably should have. Uh, I will certainly iron it after I cut out my triangles. At some point I may get up and go up to the ironing board, but for now I'm just gonna deal with it. And here's my next one. That's cute. I think these ones look really good together. It's adorable. Let's do another one. So that's cute. Here's another cute one. I love lying them up next to the other ones. I really want to go iron this polka dot one. It's driving me a little bit crazy. You could layer up the fabric. So for example, if I was going to cut this piece next, I could fold this fabric in half, which it's actually already folded in half. As you can see, folded in half. And put your template down on top. In this case, I probably wouldn't trace with the pencil. I would probably just use my rotary cutter. You could actually even do this without, let's see if this would work. I think you could do this even without the, um, the ruler. You could just cut literally around the template. The hard part would be making sure the template didn't slip. But you could just make sure you're still lined up against the other line. Rotate it one last time. And now I should have two triangles. Let's see. Yep. There you go. So you could even do that with three layers of fabric. I probably wouldn't go more than three, especially without using a ruler. I think it would get really slippery and, and hard to do, but you could do it that way. And look at these great scraps I have left over. I am so excited to use these little scraps. I kind of want to just use them right now, but I'll have to wait. I've cut out one of each fabric. You do not have to use all of the triangles that you cut out. I think there's too many different patterns. I'd rather take some pieces away and add duplicates than have too much going on. Now how about that? I think that's looking pretty good. You can, you can picture it if this was all one line instead of the two lines, but these are the fabrics here. So the ones that I took out, I took out this one and this one, even though this is so Valentine's Day, I just didn't feel like it fit with the other ones. It's a little bit more antique. And then I took out the batik because there's no other batiks in there. I want to add in a couple other, I want to add in some duplicates. So I definitely want to add in another one of these and then probably another polka dot. So I'll think about it. I'm going to add a couple other ones. I have cut out 13 triangles for the front and now I need to cut out my backing. So I'm going to cut out 13 of the same exact size triangles as the one here. I'm actually second guessing my, my decision about the red on the back and I'll tell you why because if you, some of these have a lot of white on them like this one and if you put the red up against it, it can look a little, you know what? That one's not so bad though, actually. Maybe that's okay. Let me try it on one more of the white ones. This one, I'm gonna go with it. I'm gonna go with the red. I've cut out my 13 triangles to be the back of the bunting. I'm gonna put those aside for a minute and come back to the fronts. This is the fun part. I have collected just some little bits, some odds and ends of varying types of lace. There's other things that you could gather too. You could gather um, little rhinestones or sequins. Um, you could cut out little hearts and attach the hearts, applique the hearts to your triangles. But what I'm thinking, so I had gathered these and some of them could be really cute. Like for example, I could put a strip of this at the top of this one. 
And I like that because you have the lines coming down and then you would have this line going across. So that could be cool. And then I have this Rick Rack, red Rick Rack, and you could do something maybe on these, maybe one on each corner, like coming up like this and then down the other side. That could be cool. Uh, so I'll put these aside into a pile. My, I guess my concern is that it's gonna get too busy, that the fronts, because there's so many different fabrics, the fronts are already pretty busy, that my concern is that then, then it's just gonna be too much. So I have some white rickrack. I could do something with that that could be cool. The other thing I have is I have a ton of this lace. And what I think I am gonna do, instead of trying to mess around too much with the front, because I am worried it's just gonna be too busy, is put some of this lace trimming each, each triangle. Now, that's gonna be a lot. I mean, that's gonna look, in terms of the way it looks, that's gonna be like, oh my God, that's a lot of lace. But, you know, it's Valentine's Day and it's a holiday bunting. It's not something that's gonna be out every day. Like I might not do this for a kitchen bunting, for example. So I'm gonna go for it. I kinda wanna see what it's, gonna, what it's gonna look like. The other thing that I have a ton of is this lace here, which is gorgeous. I love this lace. It's so pretty. And I, I shouldn't say I have a lot of it. I have, you know, some, I have enough. But I do have literally a ton of this lace here. And what I'm thinking is because depending on where you have your bunting, you may be seeing the back of it, right? Because if you're hanging it in, for example, a doorway, depending on which way you walk through the doorway, you're gonna see the front or the back. So it would be kind of nice for maybe these back pieces to have some trimming of lace. And since these are all the same color, I could just do a piece of lace at the top for all of these. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm gonna give this a shot and see how it turns out. The next step is to attach these pieces. So these right sides together, just, just the, the, the two angles, not the top, the two angles. But before you do that, you wanna attach anything you're gonna attach. So if you're not planning to attach anything and you're just gonna put right sides together and go forward, which I think is totally fine. I think that this is enough as it is. It doesn't really need anything else. Uh, but if you're ready to do that, then the next step is to do, is just to sew on the diagonals. I'm going to attach the lace to all of the fronts, or maybe I should do it to all of the backs. I'm gonna attach the lace to all of the fronts, all of this lace to all of the fronts, and all of this lace to all of the backs. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna attach the lace to the back of the triangles first. And the way I'm gonna do this, I'm just gonna send these through the machine one after another. I'm not gonna stop in between and, and cut off each one. So that will make it much quicker for me. Now I'll take my next one and send it through. And the third one's going through. And keep going until you have all 13 chained together. I'm gonna take my first triangle. I'm gonna measure around to see how much I need. And it looks like I need about here, so I'll cut, I'll cut right here. And then instinctively, you would think that you would wanna sew this on facing out like this, but that's actually not how you wanna do it. You wanna sew facing in, which seems counterintuitive, but when you flip it right side out, it will be the correct way. But I'm gonna try and start at the tip, and I'm going to measure half of my lace, which would be right about here, and put this under my machine. And then sew all the way to the end. So you can see here's the, here's the top of my triangle. I went down one side. Now I'm going to turn the lace and this is where it gets bulky and you have to be careful. Turn the lace going back up the other side. Like that. Thank you. 
And I must not have measured correctly. I must not have gotten my full halfway point because as you can see, this side is way up above and then this one is below. But I think this will be okay when I, when I, well, it's pretty far down, isn't it? What I think I'm gonna do is cheat. I'm just gonna sew an extra little piece right there. Let's see if it works. I think that should be, I think that should be okay, especially once I take an iron to it right now, it's kind of folding down right here. But I can even take a couple hand sewn stitches right there and just close it up. It should be fine. I've sewn down this side. I'm coming to the tip. I'm gonna put my needle down. Some machines always end, whenever you stop sewing, end with the needle down. Mine does not. And I'm going to turn this all the way around, pivot it, so now I'm coming up the other side. Moment of truth, we're gonna turn this right side out. Before you turn it right side out, trim your lace off. It's kind of a fun part. Also trim this tip here. This is where you're gonna get the bulk. So you don't wanna trim through your seam, but you wanna trim this tip right off and maybe even do it a little bit on the diagonal just to get as much bulk out of there as you can and then flip it right side out. Now you can pull the lace So now we're gonna go all the way around the triangle and we're gonna top stitch. Get as close to the edge as you can. There you go. I'd say that's pretty, pretty lovely. I think lovely is a good word to describe this. Like I almost like the back better. Um, it is, but so I guess you could choose to either have the front or the back. So I'm gonna do the same exact thing for all other triangles and then I'll show you how we're gonna attach them across the top. I sewed all 13 of my triangles. I think they're looking pretty good. The one thing I would say is that I would iron before you top stitch. Because some of these, the wrinkles, get this thread out of here, I have a lot of thread. Some of these, the wrinkles, especially around the point, are pretty visible. And I think if I had ironed it before I top stitched, that might've have, that might have helped. So that's what I would do. I have also decided that I'm just gonna have this be the front. I think the backs will each have a pretty cool pattern and then the fronts will look a little fancier. So the next step is to create what's called bias tape. And I don't know why they call it bias tape because it's not sticky, it's not tape-like at all, but that's what they call it. And it's basically creating a strip of fabric to sew to the top to connect all of these triangles together. I've cut all of my strips to be, I, have, I cut three strips, and each one of these strips, well, let's see, how long is it? So each strip is about an arm, almost two arms in length, and then they are two and a quarter inches wide. So I've cut three of these, and I think that's way more than I'm actually gonna need, but I'd rather have more than not enough. I was just gonna cut two, and then I was like, you know what, I should cut more than that. But now I need to join them together. And instead of just joining them together by doing right sides together and then flipping it inside out like that, a stronger hold and a more professional hold is to sew a diagonal seam. So the way you do a diagonal seam, your bottom strip is horizontal, and then your top strip is gonna come down. And I like to have this come a little bit above this line and over so that, so that these frayed edges won't show. And then you're gonna sew straight down on the diagonal. So from your upper left-hand side to your bottom right-hand side, your upper corner to your bottom corner. I'm gonna do that now. You could draw a line with a ruler and a pencil to make sure you have a nice straight line here, but I'm just gonna wing it. And I have changed my thread from white to red now so that it blends in. And there you go, there, there's your strip, right? And so I'll trim off the back part here. And now I'll do my next one. My next and last one, this is super fast. Oh. 
And here's my second one, opened up, easy. So now I'm gonna take my scissors, I'm just going to trim off the back triangle part. I'll save these for some, for some scrap project. You know I love that. And trim off this one. Next, I'm gonna take this over to the ironing board. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do over at the ironing board here, but I'm not gonna take you with me. So I'm going to fold this over and I'm gonna iron the entire length of this strip in half. From one end all the way to the other end in half. Then once I do that, I'm gonna open it up and you'll see I have a crease in the middle here and I'm going to iron I'm going to fold in the top and fold in the bottom and then fold it in half and, and, and iron again all the way from one end to the other. So I'll show you that again. So you're gonna fold it in half and iron it all the way from one end of the strip to the other. Then you're gonna open it up fold in one half, fold in the bottom half, and fold it again, like that. And again, iron the entire way. I have ironed my bias tape, and the next step typically would be to take your triangles and to tuck them, you can see how you'd open this up, and you would tuck it into the bias tape, like this, and then sew it right across here, one at a time. So I'd take it over to my machine, and I would you know, sew down here, and then I would take my next one and stick it in between and sew down, and then add my next one. However, I had an idea that I'm kind of excited about. So when I took a look at this, I kind of stuck one in here, and I didn't have enough of this red in the body of the triangle to make my bias tape. So I had to use this other red that's not exactly the same red. And I just felt like this looked kind of bulky and I wasn't really happy with it. So what I thought I would do is I found some of this lace and I thought that I would open this up. So my pieces are still coming together in the middle. You can see that. But here's the other side, and I'm going to put my lace on top, and I'm going to kind of off-center it a bit so that on this side, there's a tiny bit of the solid red, but then on this side, it's, it's the lace. So that when I tuck this under, it's kind of cascading lace down, which I really like. And then on the other side, it will be a tiny bit of lace, but then kind of this, this nice crisp line and then the pretty fabric. So I'm gonna try that. So my first step is going to be, and I don't have enough lace to do the entire um, bias tape, but I do have enough lace to get all the way from, from the first triangle all the way to the last triangle. So I'm gonna find the middle of my bias tape and find the middle of my lace and make sure that it's the same amount of lace on each side. So what you wanna do next is lay out all your triangles and make sure they're in the order that you want them to be in. And close it into your binding strip, just like this. Here's my binding strip. Here's the wrong side of my binding strip. Not binding strip, um, bias tape. I keep saying binding strip, it's bias tape. And close it over. It's much easier to do when you're not holding it in the air. And you're gonna sew right along here and then go to your next one. And you wanna make sure that there's the same amount of space in between each triangle. I've put a pin to secure each triangle in place. You all know I'm not a huge fan of pinning, but I think in this case it will really be helpful. And now I'm gonna take it over to the sewing machine and do a stitch right along here. So you really wanna make sure that your triangle is really tucked into the, bias, into the bias tape as far as it can possibly go. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew along here. 
And when I finish one, I'm going to lower my needle, raise my presser foot, and take out the pin of my next triangle and adjust it to tuck it all the way in. Then lower the presser foot and keep going. And you may wanna look back at an earlier one, turn it over and make sure it's coming out the way that you want on the other side. And this one I think is looking pretty good. So that's the first side and then that's, that's the back. And so since that's coming out okay, I'm gonna keep going. I finished and I am tired. This project did take a little bit of time, but I am loving this. I think it looks so good. I love both sides. I am really happy that I put the lace around the um, bias tape. I think that makes all the difference, honestly. You could even, um, you know, if you really wanted to go crazy, applique a heart into the into each into the center of each of these triangles. I think that could be really cool. But I don't even think it needs it. I think this looks so good. So I'm gonna take some pictures tomorrow when it looks a little better, so you can see the finished product. Here's where you can kind of see those those wrinkles, right? I wish I had ironed before. I top stitched, like I mentioned before, so make sure to do that. But besides that, it looks good, and I am gonna give this one more iron before I take the pictures and cut off. I have so many of these um, strings here, they're even still attached, I need to cut them off. So I'm gonna trim all my little threads, give it a nice iron, and then I'll take some pictures so that you guys can see how it looks in the daytime, but I, was really doubting this for a little bit, but I think this looks cool. I mean, I wouldn't want it hanging in my house all year, but I think for Valentine's Day, it's perfect. It's really kind of over the top, but for that one holiday, I mean, over the top is what you want for holidays. So I love making, uh, what are these called? I can't even remember right now. These are called uh, bunting. I love making bunting and I'm definitely gonna make some more and you could do so many different things I have some ideas about doing some different cutting styles and different things to attach on so we'll do some more of these in the future but for now this is looking great I'm really happy with it and I hope you're happy with your project if you made one too or I hope you just enjoyed coming along with me for the ride so I'll see you next time bye